Let's talk about the stages of load testing. Let me remind you that you are watching the third lesson of the load testing course. This is the theoretical part after which we will consider practical issues. So, let's begin. Now I will list the stages of load testing and then we will talk about each in more detail. Analysis of requirements and collection of information about the system under test. Test bench configuration for load testing. Development of the load model. Choosing a tool for load testing. Creating and debugging test scripts. Testing. Analysis of results. Preparing, sending and publishing a load testing report. So, let's go back to the first point and talk about more detail about analysis of requirements and collection of information about the system under test. When analyzing the requirements, the first thing to do is to determine what results we will consider successful. Let's ask ourselves the question, what results can we get in general? For example, we can get such an indicator as response time. As an example, this could be the time it takes to open a page or as the time needed to get any other expected result. The next criterion that relates to the analysis of requirements and the stage of load testing can be the intensity. This is the number of requests per second. In the first lesson we talk about this, namely that the intensity is the frequency of operation per unit of time or the time interval between iteration in a test script. Resource used. It could be the CPU load or the amount of RAM used. Maximum number of users. Everything is generally simple here. This is the number of users who can work with the system with a certain configuration. But this characteristic has a broad formulation. In practice, all users are divided into groups because all users cannot perform any one scenario of behavior. As a rule, some part executes the registration script. Another part simply navigates through the product pages. Some other part of the users is already placing an order. For example, if it is an online store. That is why the number of users cannot simply be counted. They must be divided into groups and each group must be counted. These were the main criteria. As you understand, most often applications are created to perform some kind of tasks. They are called business tasks and the cycle of the program to complete this business task is called business logic. As an example, let's take a search by photo. You upload a photo, send it to the server and it undergoes comparison operation with other photo, different sortings and in the end the result with similar photos comes to your computer. This is an example of how the business logic of a program or application works. 
Why I am telling this? I am telling this because in the analysis of requirements it is also possible to single out the number of business scenarios executed per unit of time, such as in the example about searching for a similar photo. Also, the metrics in the analysis of requirements during cloud testing can be attributed to the execution time of the business logic of the business operation. But these two criteria are most often used in cases where the execution of a business scenario requires a lot of resources and takes a some amount of time. This amount of time is often more than, for example, the time it takes just to open a page on the site. And now another important concept. Write it down and remember. Characteristic that we set in the requirements will be called basic load points. It's like a beacon, like a landmark, like is a starting point. All results will be compared with them. And already on the basis of the comparison, a decision will be made on the completion of lower testing or on future profiling of lower testing. There are times when there are no requirements. This happens more often than you might think. The reason is that business analysts or people who are responsible for writing performance requirements do not always understand how the system should work under load. That is why requirements are often just invented by a business analyst. It is for this reason that there is such thing as requirements analysis. In other words, checking the requirements for their correctness. Write down and remember. Requirements analysis occurs depending on the type of project. Projects are divided into Startup project Profiling project Accordingly, a new project or a project that is already running and load testing is aimed at profiling the load. Where can I get the performance requirements for a new project? List and review. Requirements sources for a new project. Analysis of generally accepted performance criteria. In other words, they take an average result or just come up with it. I already talked about this and about business analysts today. This is exactly the case. Next, the performance analysis of competing applications. This option is already better, but it is not always applicable and it can not always be used because a competing application may look like your business logic. It will be very different, which means the different amounts of system resources will be spent. This must be considered before borrowing criteria from competitors. Go ahead. Analysis of the expert opinion of developers, system and network administrators, database administrators and law testing engineers. This is a very, very good option. Analysis of target user expectations. Now let's look at where to get performance criteria for already running projects. Sources of requirements for a working project. Analysis of generally accepted performance criteria. Performance analysis of competing applications. 
analysis of the expert opinion of developers, system and network administrators, database administrators and load testing engineers, analysis of target user expectations. Yes, these four points are the same, but the features sounds like this. Performance analysis of the running version of the application in order to determine the functions, processes, operations that require profiling. What else I want to say? There are many services for analysis sites on the network. For example, there you can find criteria such as attendance and daily attendance, as well as the average time spent by a user on your site. For example, there you can check which position according to the same criteria you competitors are. An important part of requirements analysis is target audience analysis. It is useful to monitor the user's actions in the application in order to see how the interaction with the software takes place. This allows you to identify the most critical parts of the application. It is also useful to communicate directly with the users themselves. In the system where testing is already in operation, it is very useful to look at the application log on the server. User scenarios and distribution of requests during the day can be obtained by analyzing the logs on the server. So, we are almost done with the first stage of load testing, which consists in the analysis of requirements and the collection of information. And only now we can determine the basic load profile software load profile, the sum of operation with specified intensities, which is obtained on the basis of statistical information or by analyzing system requirements for the environment being checked. In other words, we now know that all users need to be divided into groups. It could be admins, it could be buyers, it could be sellers. One administrator can cancel unpaid orders, for example. The second administrator can answer questions about the work of the store. Some customers can only enter and exit the store. Some may choose the item. Some may buy. Vendors can watch what's happening. Sellers can also post new items. Let's try to fill some line. For example, we see that 300 people a day just enter the site and leave the site. There are 24 hours in a day, so 300 divided by 24 gives 12 dot. 5 visitors per hour. There are 3600 seconds in one hour. So 3600 divided by 12 to 5 gives 288. One such visitor in 288 seconds. This figure is called intensity. It is better to express the intensity in seconds. It is more convenient because in such a load testing tool as Dreameter, the interval is indicated in seconds. And now we have come to the second stage and then we will talk about the configuration of the test bench.